Adolf Kramer? I did. A strange old hereabouts, aren't you? Yes, why? You must be, or you would have nothing to do with that old heathen. Heathen or not, I'm taking his granddaughter to live with him. Well, do you know what kind of a man he is? That's none of my affair. Which part do I take? There, by the church. If you listen to us, you'll never take it. <laughs> Holiday, 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 Turk? Well, old Turk isn't much of a gentleman. What's your name? I'm Peter, the goat general. Who are you? I'm Heidi, and I'm going to live with Adolf Kramer, my grandfather. Live with him? Aren't you scared, too? Why should I be afraid of my grandfather? You'll find out. If ever he gets good and mad at you, he'll probably cut your head off. Like this. Oh. I don't care what you say. She's my niece and I can do what I please with her. Come along, come along, hurry. I'm Didi, the sister of Gretchen, who married your son Tobias. I've brought their orphan to live with you. I've taken care of her for six years. But I've got a job in Frankfurt now. Rich family. And I can't be bothered with her anymore. I know you hated Tobias and Gretchen, but you've got to take their daughter just the same. Get out of here. Here she is. Her name's Heidi. How do you do, Grandfather? I'm very glad to see you. Aren't you going to show me our house?
don't bother out to have a sheet and coverlet. I say, I suppose I ought to have a sheet and coverlet. Well, I've always had a sheet and coverlet, but if there aren't any, I could sleep under the hay. Could I use these? Adolf Kramer, but the village thinks that the child should be taken away from him. You have just come to Dorfley, Herr Pastor, or you'd understand why. They say you have known Kramer for 50 years. What sort of a man is he? Who knows? He was a grand young man, except for his wild temper. And his son grew up just like him. Tobias wanted to marry a girl from Mayenfeld. Adolf disliked her and forbade it. But the boy married her just the same and brought her home. Adolf turned them away in a rage and told Tobias never to come back until he'd given up the girl. But why should the village hate him and fear him so? Feuds and weeds grow quickly, Herr Pastor. The people of the village sided with the boy and the father cursed them and went and built himself a hut on the mountain. Since that day, he's never spoken to a living soul. Frau Anna, is the child safe with him? God knows. Living alone like that has made him a strange creature. I like to hear the church bells, don't you, Grandfather? Get to bed. Shall I say my prayers out here with you? I told you to go to bed. Yes, Grandfather. Go to bed now, Grandfather. Good night. And God bless Grandfather, and please make him like me. And please make me a good little girl. Amen. And please make Aunt Dee Dee stay in Frankfurt for a long, long time. Amen.
Thank you. Hmm. What are you making? Cheese. Could I help? Still. Would you please help me tie my apron? For ghosts. <laughs> what if you give black milk? You can milk fairly. But I don't know how to milk a goat. Well, then it's time you learned. This way. Isn't it, Grandfather? Is this the last load? Not quite. The rapid's fur is thick. It'll be a hot window. to keep us warm and cheese to eat and lots of hay for Swanley and Barely. Back early for your lessons. I will. Are you sure you can get along without me? I'll try. You're supposed to be asleep. But I couldn't stay shut. Look what I found. Hmm. Do you think there's any music left in this? We'll see. I'm afraid it's all tired out. a wonderful story. What's it about? It's about the magic wooden shoes. All right, Grandfather. I'm ready. Hmm. Now, the 
long, long time ago, there was a little Dutch girl named Nettie. I am Pastor Schultz. How do you do, Pastor Schultz? How do you do, Frau Schultz? Oh, no. I'm Fraulein Elsa, the schoolmistress. Oh, you'd make a very nice Frau Schultz. <laughs> You're mending your grandfather's coat. How nice. It's a Sunday coat, but he never wears it. He doesn't go to church. Perhaps we could persuade him to go. Would you like that? Pastor and Fraulein Elsa have come to see us. Isn't that nice? Good day, neighbor. Well, we've come to ask about the child. Go inside, Heidi. Save your breath. I have nothing to say to you. That seems to settle it. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry to insist, neighbor, but school will open soon. I'll not send Heidi to school. What will you do with her, then? She will try up here with the goats and the birds. What will she learn from them? At least she will learn no evil. Well, that's hardly enough schooling for a child. I'll teach you all that's necessary. And you will teach her religion, too? The mountains will give her the only religion worth the having, as I have found out. Come back to Dorfley, neighbor. 
This is no life up here for you and the child, at enmity with God and man. I know what they think of me and Dorfley, and they know what I think of them. It's better that we keep apart. I should not like to appeal to the law. Heidi shall not go to school or to church either. That is final. I'm sorry, neighbor. May God help you. And if any man tries to take Heidi away from me, God help him. First lesson now. said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. If a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if...
Chiquita. What is it? The grandfather and Heidi come to church. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Good to see you and the child. Thank you. You're looking well. Here comes the grandfather now. Oh, the old eagle has come down from his perch. It was lonely for Heidi. Adolf, you're an old fraud. Don't give me away. <laughs> I ask the pastor to forgive the words I said on the mountain. The words are forgotten, neighbor. This is a happy day for all of us. I, I hope we shall see you here often. What do you say, Heidi? Well, I think everybody really ought to go to church on Sunday. And I think there ought to be a Frau Schultz. Here. Where's your grandfather? He's up on the mountain, cutting some logs. Now you get on your coat and mittens. We're going away. I don't want to go away. What? I want to stay here. I love the grandfather, and he loves me. It's my birthday, and we're going to have a party. Look, he made me these for a present. They're swirly and barely. And we're going down to the village to get sausage and butter, because the grandmother and Peter are coming. Well... He won't mind your going on a little trip with me. Where? Just to Frankfurt. You can come back whenever you like. I don't want to go to Frankfurt. You will do as I say. Where are your clothes? I've got to ask the grandfather first. Where are they? In there. Now, there is nothing to worry about. You'll have a sleigh ride to Meinfeld and a nice trip on a train. And I'll buy you a present for your birthday. And can I come right back in time for my party? Now, didn't I tell you you could? And can I bring some soft rolls for the grandmother? You see, she has many teeth and can't eat her black bread. Now, yes, come. Hurry up, hurry up. First, I must go up the mountain and tell the grandfather where I'm going. There isn't time. We might miss our train. I'll send word back to him. But I've got to tell him myself. Do you think if I put my birthday shoes by the fire, he'd know I'm coming back soon? Yes, yes, of course. Now, come along. La 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 la
<laughs> Good day, little Heidi. Good day, little pastor. Are you going away? Yes, to Faithful with my Aunt Dee. Oh, I'm taking her for a little trip, my pastor. Uh, it's her birthday. Oh, how kind of you. A pleasant journey to you, Fraulein. Thank you. Sit down. Drive on. Have you seen her? Heidi, she's gone. Well, don't you know? Her aunt has taken her to Frankfurt. She's stolen now. Where are they? Stolen? There. Heidi! What if I did? There's going to be sausage and butter at my party. And I won't be there. And the grandfather will be lonely. Remember what I told you. I'm to say to the lady, how do you do, Fraulein Rottenmeyer? And to Clara, how do you do, Fraulein Clara? I hope you will be well soon. But where are we going to their house? You will find out when we get there. A young lady's breeding is indicated by her deportment when elders are present. At such times, her manner should be sedate and diffident. It's time for them to be here, Fraulein. Remember, Clara, no excitement. You're still an invalid. The habit of interruption should always be frowned upon. The well-bred young lady always waits until her elders are silent. I wonder what she'll be like. Your father expects a healthy, unspoiled mountain child of your age to share your studies. Personally, I think the whole plan is a mistake. Papa thought it might be good for me to have a playmate. You have me? Don't I give you my entire time and devotion? Yes, and it's very kind of you. But I don't have much fun. <coughs> Now remember. My word. Well, come on. Announces. Where did you pick up that? That is my niece. How unfortunate for the poor child. Are you the king here? You look like a king. Ah, little Fräulein, if only the rest of the world could see through your eyes. Mm. Quite a personage under that extraordinary hat. 
Andrews, what is she like? Highly intelligent. Don't be misled by the hat. Show them in. Rottenmeyer. What is your name? Heidi. Heidi? Ridiculous. What name did they give you when you were baptized? I don't remember that. Are you being impudent? No, Fräulein. She didn't understand. She was baptized Adelheid. Hmm. She looks too young. How old is she? She's older than she appears. She's nearly 11. Aunt Daddy doesn't tell the truth. I'm eight years old today. <laughs> Grandfather was going to give me a birthday party. How far have you gone in school? I've never gone at all. How do you do, Fraulein Clara? I hope you will be well soon. Not Fraulein. I'm just Clara, and I'll call you Heidi. Why do you sit in that chair with wheels? I can't walk. I fell last time and hurt my back. That's when Fraulein Rottenmeier came to take care of me. Then you couldn't climb the mountain with Gold Peter and Swami and Burley. Who are they? Are they friends of yours? Yes, they're the grandfather's goats. And Peter, he's the goat general. Oh, tell me about them. That's enough. You will take that impossible child back. You'll have to give me more expense money, then. And the 50 marks as Sesamon promised. Do you dare to speak to me like that? I'll not give you one fennig. You'd better. I've brought just the kind of child her Sesamon asked for. Unless you have your own reasons for not wanting her. Get out. And take your wretched niece with you. All right, but you'll give me the money. Or I'll write to her Sesamon. You think I don't know what your little game is? A rich widow and his sick child. You don't want Clara to get well. Not yet. Not until you've made him think his little darling can't live without you. Now you can get rid of the impossible child yourself. Sell her to the gypsies for all I care. I'm afraid the grandfather will be worried. He didn't know I was going away. So I must go back tomorrow. Didn't Daddy tell you? What? That you were to live here with me. No, she didn't tell me. You see, my mom is dead. And my papa's princess keeps him in Paris most of the time. And I haven't anyone to play with. I can't live here. I'm going back to the grandfather right away. Indeed you are. No, I like her. Andrews will take you home in the morning. No, I want her to stay. That is for me to decide. I know what is best for you, Clara. No, no, Papa sent for and you've got to wait till he comes home. Clara, you're not strong enough for this excitement. You'll make yourself ill. Yes, I will. I know I will if you don't let me keep hiding. But, Clara, I can't stay. Quiet, dear. Quiet. Remember what a sick little girl you are. You do want me to get well, don't you, Fraulein? How can you ask? Then, then please let me keep hiding. Very well. For the present. You can't keep me here. The grandfather's waiting. He doesn't know where I am. Then I'd have served. You'll like it here, Heidi. And we'll have such good times together. And Fraulein can send word to your grandfather. No, no. Aunt Diddy must take me home. Dinner is waiting. We will attend to that in the morning. Then it's all right. I can go. I said in the morning, I'd like. Adelheid? I am waiting. For what we are about to receive, the Lord make us duly thankful. And God bless Grandfather and Swanley and Barely. And please make me a good little girl. Amen. Oh! You may serve.
Remember Clara? Only a little. Must you hoard your food, Adelaide? It's for the grandmother. I'm going to take it home with me tomorrow. Put it back. known as false hair. I think you'll find it rather tasty. Will you serve yourself? I think I'd rather just have some cheese. Evidently, our little friend has no idea of table manners. Bring me the tray, Andrews. Now watch, Adelheid. This is the way civilized people serve themselves. This is not humorous. You are not in your barbarous hut in the Alps now, but in a cultured home. Adelheid! Did I actually see you yawn? I am horrified. Don't scold her. She's had such a hard day. I am trying to be patient, Clara. But it is the height of impropriety to yawn at the dinner table. A yawn at any time is a sign of disrespect and lack of control. It shows that the attention is wandering and that the young person is not interested in the improvement of her mind. You're going for the child? I am. You're not walking all the way to Frankfurt. It's over a hundred miles. I shall get there. Wait, Nathan. Let us lend you enough for your railway fare. It's kind of your friends, but my legs will carry me. And I have money to bring us back in the train. Off you, Good luck, Adol. Godspeed you, neighbor. Miss Hasty Pudding. I heard Goat Peter's horn. He must be looking for me. Goat Peter? Yes. There. Don't you hear it? I say, I say, it's a little chilly outside for this sort of thing, isn't it? Let's try the window. Better get dressed, little Fräulein. Breakfast will be soon. Well, I never thought I'd turn out to be a lady's maid. Hurry up. Breakfast in ten minutes, Adelheid. We insist on punctuality in this household. Punctuality. Don't dawdle. Funniest little thing. I'm so glad she's going to stay. Is she? 
Yes, but she doesn't know it. The poor dear thinks she's going home today. But she'll be happier here. Don't you think so? And I'll have some new dresses made for her. Do you think you could manage a new hat? It's lovely. I wonder where Aunt Dee Dee is. It's time we started. Oh, uh, don't think about that now. We're going to have our lessons with Fraulein in a minute. Well, maybe I could just this once, but there's time. I'll be sorry to leave you. I hope you begin to walk soon and not have to sit in that chair. Fraulein says perhaps I'll never walk again. Well, Bill Peter said I'd never learn to read. The grandfather told me I could, and I did. Your back feels just like mine. And your legs do, too. I should think you could walk if you wanted to enough. Why don't you try? Oh, I wouldn't dare. Why not? I might fall. Lean on me. I'm pretty strong. Do you really think I could walk? Could we'll try. Then we'd find out. Come on. Put your hand on me. No, no, I can't. Don't ever tell Fraulein. I won't. What's that? A monkey. I'd better let her in. She's sitting in the snow. Oh, Fraulein wouldn't like it. She wouldn't want her to catch cold. And besides, I've never met a monkey. Have you? No, not to speak to. Oh, she said she's very cold. <laughs> How are you? He has very nice manners. Fine, that man would like you. Don't bail and the hole will be washed up. I want a Louise. You want what? Louise, am I monkey? Monkey, you've been misinformed. This is not the zoo. Danger is to come. Young ladies have finished with your vulgar display of lack of restraint. We will begin our lessons. <laughs> Andrew! Andrew! Help! Help! Did you call? Take that thing out of here. My word, a gorilla. Sorry, this is most undignified. Oh, this is really not my fault. Can I help you have a talk? There we go. There we go. Well! Get out of here! Oh, my God. You might try putting salt on her tail. Ah, what we need is strategy. Can I get it for you? 
No, thank you. I, I think I've got it. Now, the rest of you draw fire. I do the attack from the rear. <laughs> Who let that beast in? I did, but she was so cold out in the snow. That's no concern of ours. Oh, please, Fraulein, it was my fault as much as hers. Such conduct is inexcusable. She shall be punished severely. Don't you touch her, my papa! Oh, oh, I'm sorry, dear. Don't excite yourself. I'd forgotten it might upset you. Adelheid, you should spend the rest of the day in your room. I can't do that. Aunt Daddy is going to take me home. Your aunt went away this morning. She went away? But she's coming back. No, she's not. I discharged her. But she's got to take me home. I'm afraid not. She cares nothing about you. She told me to sell you to the gypsies. Oh, for Fraulein, don't. I doubt whether you will ever see your aunt Dizzy again. Got in that hat. Oh. So you were running away. I wasn't running away. I was just going home by myself. Andrews, throw these rolls in the dustbin. Oh, no. They're for the grandmother. She can't eat her bite bread. And throw that wretched hat in the dustbin, too. Oh, no. Not my hat. I need that to go home. That is all, Andrews. If you stop me, I'll run away again. I can't stay here. There aren't any pine trees or any mountains. Nonsense. I'm not going home until I send you. Now you march upstairs. If you leave your room again today, you'll be quit. Come on, little Fräulein, keep the chin up. Here's your precious bonnet. Don't you think we ought to put it under the bed to avoid the dustbin? Try and tear her up there, will you? Oh, Heidi, I... I didn't know you wanted to go home so much. But you mustn't run away again. Promise you won't. Oh, no. I couldn't promise. You must, Heidi. Papa's coming home for Christmas. That's only two weeks more. If, if you still feel homesick, then I'll ask him to send you back. Are you sure he will? Oh, yes. He'll do it for me. I won't run away. I promise. Very impressive. Just look at this. Oh, I was hoping for a new hat. But I'm not going to wear my new clothes when I go home tonight. No? The grandfather might not know me. Oh, you're going to leave us tonight, are you? Yes, Claire's going to ask her papa to send me. Now, he'll be here in a few moments, and I've come to tell you that when you meet him, you're to say, how do you do, gracious sir, and make him a little curtsy. What's that? Well, it's a... <clears throat> Way to say how do you do? Yes, I dare say, but don't you think you ought to practice it? 
How do you do, gracious sir? Yes, I, I think that ought to do. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Merry Christmas to you, Andrews. Thank you, sir. Everything all right? Oh, yes, sir. Quite all right. Yeah, quite all right. Merry Christmas, Carl. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Welcome, Herr Sesemann. Oh, thank you, Fräulein Rottenmeier. How is Clara? As well as may be expected, considering what we've been through. I didn't want to disturb you by writing, but the child that you brought is impossible. Indeed. Her manners are dreadful, and she excites Clara to do things beyond her strength. I've been seriously worried. I'm sorry to hear that. Why didn't you send the girl away? Clara took an absurd fancy to the child, and I hadn't the heart to cross her. You know I'm foolishly fond of dear Clara. But I hope you'll act immediately for the sake of Clara's health. Papa, Papa, I'm waiting. Coming, dear. We will discuss this later, Fräulein. Oh, Papa, I'm so glad to see you. Darling. Clara, what has happened? I expected that as Fräulein told me, but you haven't looked so well since your accident. Of course, because I've been so happy. It's Heidi. Heidi? My little companion. Thank you a thousand times for letting me have her. But uh, Fräulein seems to think she excites you beyond your strength. I like to be excited. And she makes something funny happen all the time. <laughs> oh, Papa, she's the dearest little thing. Oh, my darling, something has had an amazing effect on you. I didn't have much to look forward to before. Now when I wake up, I think I'm going to spend the day with Heidi. I don't see why Fraulein doesn't like her. Nor I. It's very odd. <laughs> <laughs> This, sir, is Fräulein Heidi. How do you do, Heidi? How do you do, Sir Gracious? <laughs> I didn't do it very well. Shall I try it again? No, I don't think that could be improved upon. We're going into the Christmas tree in a minute. You'll never guess what your present is, will you, Heidi? Now, let me see. Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? Well... I suppose it's sort of animal. <laughs> I know. It's a Shetland pony. <laughs> we are ready for the ceremony, Herr Sesemann. <laughs> Come on, Sir Gracious. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, remember, don't excite yourself through tire easily. Yes, so <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
lovely. Merry Christmas to you all, and thank you for another year's faithful service. Our Christmas greetings to you, sir, and Flora and Clara. A long life and good health to you both. Thank you, Andrews. So very grateful, sir. Carl. Thank you, sir. Fritz. Thank you very much, sir. Merry Christmas, Frida. Oh, thank you, sir. We'll wait till we've had our presents. <laughs> he thinks he's going to be an animal. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, sir. For your Christmas, Fräulein, and thank you for the efficient management of my household. Thank you, Herr Tesemann. I've, I've always felt like a mother to Clara. Now, Papa, my present to Heidi first. Oh, Clara, you're back. Oh, I forgot. That one, Papa. Happy Christmas to you, my dear. Thank you. Clara, from a doting papa. Turn upside down and right side up, Heidi. <laughs> it's the grandfather's house. He's bringing in the wood. Can I keep it for always? Longer than that. Lovely. Now it's my turn. I don't see my Shetland pony around anywhere. Shall we give him this present now? You hold my dog, Fraulein. Now watch, Papa. You stand over there. Now don't be afraid. I'm not. Child. They told me you might never walk again. How did you? How did it happen? Me. Heidi. I was afraid, but she made me try, and we did a little more every day. You dear child, you've worked a miracle. Oh no, it was the grandfather. Oh, Peter said I'd never learn to read, but the grandfather said I could if I wanted to, and I did. So I thought Clara could walk if she wanted to, and she did. <laughs> you've given me the happiest Christmas of my life. And I've had a nice Christmas present, too. Shall I get ready to go home now? Oh, I have another Christmas present for you. A home with us as long as you live. No, I couldn't do that. Why not? The grandfather's been waiting for me such a long time. Oh, hi. I hoped you wouldn't want to go now. Well, don't you want to stay here with Clara and be her little sister? Yes, I'd like to be that, but I've got to go home. Papa. I told Heidi you'd let her go, if she wanted to. But you don't understand, dear. You'll be my own daughter. You, you'll have clothes like Clara's. Everything just like hers. And grow up to be a great lady. Now, wouldn't you like that? No, thank you. I want to go home to my grandfather. I can't let you do that. But Clara promised. I... I'm sorry, Heidi. Someday you'll understand. Papa, 
I did promise you'd send her home. But, dear, you don't know what her grandfather's like. Dee Dee told me that he was a very brutal man, feared by everyone. No, Heidi will be much happier here with us. You, you've spoiled everything. Don't break my snowstorm! Fräulein Rottenmeier! What is the meaning of this? Forgive me, Herr Sesemann, I, I was beyond myself. You must realize I cannot have you longer in my employ. Yes, Herr Sesemann. I'll give you a month's salary. You will arrange to leave tomorrow. Somebody? My granddaughter. You might find her at the theater. Every youngster in town tries to get there on Christmas Day. Yes, she might be there. Thank you. What is it, Grandpa? I'm looking for my granddaughter. She can't go inside. Well, I must see if she's here. I'm sorry, sir. The performance is just over. You better wait over there. Thank you. Too much excitement for one day. But Heidi hasn't seen him. Never mind. I don't see him. Heidi! Heidi, where are you? It's your grandfather calling me. It couldn't be your grandfather, Heidi. It sounded just like him. You must be mistaken, dear. Your grandfather's a hundred miles away on his mountain. This was the sleigh. It must be the right street. Heidi! Schutzmann! Heidi. That old fellow is acting very strangely. I think you better keep an eye on him. It's my granddaughter here. A child named Heidi. Your granddaughter? It isn't likely. I'll see for myself. <coughs> here. What are you doing here? I'm looking for my granddaughter. She may be in this house. Oh, come on, come, come on. Come, come. You better come with us, come. She's in one of these houses. I'll not leave till I find her. Come. What is this? You can't disturb people come like this. On. I'm Herr Wachtmeister, I heard her cry out from the sleigh. I tell you, she's in some trouble. We can't have you beating at all the doors of Frankfurt at this hour. I must find her. Of course, of course. But she can come to no harm tonight. 
If you are still worried in the morning, we'll investigate your story. I tell you, I must find her tonight. Look him up. The cells are all full, Herr Wachtmeister. <laughs> naturally, naturally. Christmas night. Put him in the detention room, then. Oh, but Herr Wachtmeister. Take him away. Stop that. Christmas comes but once a year. Yeah, with it comes too much beer. <laughs> Christmas comes but once a year, when it comes to its beer. <laughs> Going away. Oh, is it morning already and you're going to take me home? Yes, that's it. We're going home. But I thought Andrews was going to take me. Shh. He can't. You ought to go with me. Now dress quickly. If you are just and merciful God, then help me. And this all in my need. Hurry up. First, I must go and say goodbye to Claire and her papa. No, you can't disturb them so early. I said goodbye for you. Oh, wait, I forgot. Don't do that again. Heidi! Heidi! Put his stuff to that. Ah, oh, let the poor chap enjoy his Christmas. <laughs> Why, it isn't morning at all. It's still night. Shh. It's a long way. We've got to catch an early train. This isn't the right way. I know what I'm doing.
You broke out of the Lindenstrasse jail. You took a straight that did not belong to you. You sold that child. He didn't steal me. I tell you, she's mine. Silence. The captain, they have found the wound. Good, bring her in. Is this your child? Yes, yes, sir, Captain. No, I'm not. And is this the man who struck you in the street and took her away from you? Yes. She's lying. I don't know who she is or what she's doing, but Heidi is mine. That's enough. You will be held for trial. <laughs> you stupid fools! Can't you see what you're doing? Lock him up. You can't! You're not going to take her away from me again! No! No, no you better take her away! No. He's coming to close. He is my grandfather! I'm really a truly grandfather. Please, please. Come on, Lloyd. Don't be hysterical. Please. We want your lady for the trial. We may take your child home. I am not her child. She's a bad lady. She tried to dump me in the depths. Please. Please let the grandfather take me home. He didn't mean to do anything bad. I'll work hard and pay back for everything he broke. So will Swami and Burley. Pay no attention to her. She'll be all right when I get her to bed. I won't go with her. She broke my snowstorm and sent me in D.D. away so she couldn't take me home to the mountain. If you don't believe me, just ask her sesame. She'll tell you the truth. Her sesame? What has her sesame to do with this? Nothing. Nothing at all. He has to. Aunt Dindy brought me there to play with Clara. And I taught her how to walk. Oh, this is ridiculous. Just a minute. Well, now, Lieutenant. Perhaps we'd better send for her, Cesar. Oh, absurd! We... Well, we visited the Saceman house tonight. Christmas, you know, my sister's governess there. It would be highly improper to disturb her Saceman at this hour. I think you'd better wait until we hear what her Cesarman's got to say. Grandfather! Grandfather! <laughs> Oh dear, dear. Seems quite impossible. <laughs> Nothing emerges from the spigot. Not that way. Oh. <laughs> that way. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, I say, Bernie. <laughs> say, Bernie's a very warm goat, isn't she? Of course, silly. All goats are warm. <laughs> How cozy. Heidi! Heidi! <laughs> They're coming! Very often master this. <laughs> Well, well. <laughs> oh, Grandfather, this is Clara. I just think she beat me running. <laughs> and I beat her specimen. How do you do? And this is the grandmother and Go Peter. And this is Catcher Schultz and Frau Schultz. I guess I can't deny it this time. They were married yesterday. <laughs> Come sit down, all of you. Why, you must be starved after you climb up the mountain. <laughs> Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty. And please make every...